Hi, this is Chance Happening for On Watch. I'm here with Jenny Knoyer running for District 5 City Council seat. As a senior advocate, do you feel that you've been taken less seriously as a candidate? Well, I, you know, really I don't think so. Uh, I have, uh, for a lot of the people that I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot of people because uh, I have uh, made sure that I'm out and about uh, at farmers markets. I was at the uh, concerts in the park uh, at Grayseda. And I think that actually some people feel that maybe uh, it, they need somebody with a little more maturity in there. Do you ever feel like, uh, say, the Modesto Bee or any of the media in town kind of downplays anybody who represents a certain demographic, say, in covering local elections? You know, I've never noticed that. I really, I, I, I've never noticed that they, not, demogra not demographics or, um, you know, uh, they will bring out if you've had, you know, a problem with the law, uh, that kind of thing. But as far as age or race or anything, no, I've never, no I've never noticed them to, to do that. They will, if they think you're leaning one way or the other, nah. they, they bring that out, but not, not because of, you know, not because of your age or your lack of age. Because some of the candidates are very young. Mm -hmm. I mean, really young and, and some, uh, and, you know, so they don't, they don't bring that in at all. Well, that's good. Um, what do you think you can do for District 5 that say, uh, any of the other candidates haven't brought up? Well, you know, I've talked, uh, District 5 is a, a pretty safe area. Um, we we haven't had a lot of problems, as far as I can tell. I, I talk to people in our districts, and there's not anything specific to our district that uh, people are concerned on. It's basically the city of Modesto that they're concerned about. Uh, you know, like jobs, uh, housing, uh, the traffic flow they're, mm -hmm. they're concerned about that but we do as far as I know and and but I will be walking my district so I'll find out more but the people that I've talked to in my district uh, don't we don't have any specific problems to our that I know of right now to our to our district mm -hmm. it's just the city of Modesto that they're concerned about just the kind of general environment lack of jobs I notice a lot of the stores on McHenry a lot of empty storefronts uh, just the basic general kind of climate, economic climate right now, right? Yes, and, and I, this is one thing that concerns me too because I think uh, that Modesto has in the last, well, it, since, the, since the 90s and we had this decline and then they came again and they built their, uh, our economy on construction, development, and didn't have, there was no backup, there's no industry for like, for 12 months a year jobs for people to have jobs year round a steady income because construction work is good as long as you have something to build if you mm -hmm. don't have it something to build then you don't have a job so I think that what what's concerning is that we don't have that base and it we don't it doesn't I don't know if they're not marketing I just don't think they're marketing Modesto for what Modesto has to offer and uh, that's what they're concerned about. Yeah, and of course, they're concerned about the homeless. This is another uh, uh, concern, uh, what is gonna happen with the homeless. Uh, and that's something that we need to face. We, it's a problem. And I don't, know, I don't know if we should call it a problem as much as a, a situation that these people find themselves in and that we need to face up to. Yeah, it's a quality of life issue not just for the people with homes but for the homeless themselves oh it's definitely a, yes so nobody wants to see people wandering around with nothing to do sleeping in the rally and i'm sure the people doing that don't want to you know be sleeping in the alley either well the a lot of them don't want to and we're finding more and more homeless because uh the people are losing their jobs mm -hmm. and a big there's a uh, there's a group of uh, women, especially women between the ages of 50 and 65, that have lost their jobs. And how can they compete? And they're a single parent or a single person. How can they compete with a, a, a someone coming out of college? They're not eligible for anything yet. So they're kind of in a 
a, a no-win situation. They, they're just stuck. And, and the, these are homeless people, and they, they don't know what to do because they've never been there before. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some things that Modesto can do to kind of alleviate this situation? You know, that's a huge, huge question, and that's not something I, I it would take a lot of study. That's not something that I can give an, a really a, an in-depth answer to. I was at a uh, uh, the committee hearing that they had, uh, a report that they had on the Blue Ribbon Committee that uh, for the homeless, and I listened to what they had to say, and there's still a lot of study that needs to be done, uh, but I think that that we can find some kind of a solution. Um, and it's, it's gonna take a lot of cooperation. It's gonna take a lot of cooperation between the city officials, between the people uh, of the community, between uh, uh, nonprofits and citizens themselves. But it, it, it's a big problem and it's not gonna, it, you, there's no instant fix. Yeah, no easy answer. No for it. easy answer. No, and there, I can't give you an easy answer. I, if I did, wouldn't yeah. that be wonderful? Yeah. Every every city problem in that would, would be solved. It. That's right. Um, as far as funding goes for city council or any local race, it's going to be quite pricey. Do you? Uh, what kind yeah. of problems do you uh, experience if you're not, you know, connected? Not my mem not member of chamber of commerce, any of the big social yeah. circles. Well, the thing is, uh, being that I've lived here 71 years, I know a lot of people, I do not want to be connected with anyone. I do not want to be connected. I do not want to be, have to have, um, you know, to answer to a, a, polit a, a special group. Yeah. And this is, and it is expensive. And that's why I'm running my campaign on like a grassroots. And somebody said to me the other day, gee, I, I can't give you very much. And I said, that's fine. $5. $10, $20, whatever you can give me will add up. Uh, the one thing that they do require is that it has, it, they like checks because mm -hmm. then they can follow cash they don't like. But this, the thing is what I'm, I am, because I'm not going to go for a, a, a large sum from somebody because you, if you take a lot of money from somebody and even if you say you're not going to be influenced, you you feel a little obligation toward that person. So I'm not, I'm not running my campaign. My campaign is strictly uh, grassroots. It's on the, you know, the individual giving me small amounts as, as much as it, and it is expensive and I'm just living within my budget. As, you know, I'm just going, you know, from day to day from what I can get. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's too bad that it's expensive because it keeps a lot of people who are really qualified from running. Mm -hmm. It's almost you have to have that kind of economic base for people to contribute before you actually decide the run, I think, in yeah. a lot of people's minds anyway. Well, you, ha you have to have a, a way that you feel that you can collect enough money yeah. to run it. And then you have to run it according to how much you have. And, um, and I just honestly believe that you don't have to spend that much money if you're willing to get out there and basically go door to door, knock on doors, meet the people, get yourself out there. Mm -hmm. and not so much spending on big lavish events as actually putting it towards getting the word out and that, connecting with the voters? That's right. That's right. Now, uh, have you ever gotten the sense that members of city council can kind of help each other out, look out for each other, protect each other's interests? and? Uh, if so, do you ever feel like uh, that has changed since the advent of district voting? Well, see, I really, you know, this is only the second time they voted for the district voting. And I mean, I, I can't tell you that I know the difference. Yeah. I, don't re I don't know what it was like. I mean, I know what the city council was and I went to, to some city council meetings. I've gone to a lot now since they've had the district. But to tell you the truth, I can't uh, give you a, a specific answer on how they, you know, how they affect one another. I can't, I don't know if I would be even willing to say that they lean toward one another or they help each other. Uh, they may depend on somebody to give them an answer that they don't know or depend on what that person has to say because they're more knowledgeable on that subject. But I, I would not uh, go out to say that that they they affect each, you know they have influence each other that much. Okay, so you wouldn't say they're like 
you know, trying to help each other out, keep each other all on the same page, all stay in the same seat kind of thing? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I I wouldn't say that. I think that you'd you'd have to be on the inside. You'd have to be really in their meetings, listening to them talk. You can't yeah. just judge that from the city council meetings. No. Okay, that that would be an issue for uh, younger voters that kind of predispossessed to think that you know these guys are all helping each other out, patting each other on the back. Well, you know, if they want to really find out attend the com the committee meetings committee meetings are all open mm -hmm. uh, then that's kind of there's also uh, on Monday at I think it's Monday afternoons at 430 they have the agenda meetings where they talk about the agenda the committee you know they get there and they talk about the agenda so they can go to that and listen to what they have to say there's a lot of ways we can find out about what's what they're thinking and what's going on taking the time to do it and of course when you're young and working or going to school it's pretty difficult somebody my age really has the time and should do it what would you say to a younger person who doesn't necessarily want to get involved doesn't feel that you know even knowing about what's going on is going to help their situation at all no I you know what that's too bad they should you can get involved and you can make a difference the thing is it's not instant you have to be you have to go you have to be persistent you have to stick with it if you believe in it you stick with it and you can make you can make a change mm -hmm. it's i think nowadays there's just so much going on the cell phones computer internet tv it's everything's quick it's right now they want the the quick easy answer and it's you know it's just not going to happen no and that's it it isn't going to happen and we have to be patient maybe because of my age i've learned patience and so maybe that's why I don't expect incident answers and I'm willing to pursue whatever it is to find the right answer. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty much everything I had to ask. I learned a lot. I want to thank you for coming out. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful talking to you and I always enjoy talking to younger people. You, I have grandchildren your age, so it's very enjoyable. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. This is Chance Happening for On Watch.